Hi, I'm Yasmin Kakishta. I'm an air quality inspector for the South Coast Air Quality Management District, or AQMD. In this film, we're going to show you how we inspect service stations, what we look for, and how you can be prepared so that these inspections can go quickly and smoothly. Despite the significant progress we've made over the past decades, we still have among the worst air quality in the nation for ozone and fine particle pollution. Breathing ozone can cause serious health effects, especially to our kids, elders, and other sensitive people. Ozone is formed in our air by a chemical reaction between organic vapors such as gasoline fumes, pollution from burning fuels, and sunlight. To help reduce ozone, special equipment is required to capture fumes whenever gasoline is moved from storage tanks to delivery trucks to gas stations and into cars. In our region, this prevents 18 tons per day of organic vapors from gasoline fumes from escaping into our air. This is equal to the total daily amount of organic vapors released from about 2 million cars. The South Coast AQMD is responsible for making sure that service stations in the non-desert portions of Los Angeles, Riverside, San Bernardino counties, and all of Orange County have the required air pollution control equipment and that this equipment is correctly maintained and operated. We will be covering Phase 1 equipment, Phase 2 equipment, tank pressure management equipment, in-station diagnostic data, and record keeping. We hope service station owners, operators, and your employees review this film occasionally so you can understand the process and be able to meet all of the rules and requirements. Gasoline vapor recovery systems are divided into two sections that are connected together. Phase 1 was the first system required by law. As trucks deliver gasoline, the vapors from the underground tank are collected back into the truck by natural pressure balance within a sealed system. These vapors are returned to the distributor where the trucks fill up and convert it back to gasoline. Phase 2 was later required by law for vapor recovery at the dispensers. When you put gas into your car, the vapors are collected back into the station's underground tanks. Some stations use a natural liquid vapor pressure balance to collect the vapors. These are called balance systems. Other stations have additional systems that use a vacuum to pull the vapors from the dispensers and push them into the tanks. There is also equipment to relieve excess pressure within the storage tanks. When we arrive at your station, you'll recognize our cars by the AQMD logo on the door. We will always try to park out of the way of your business traffic. The first thing we will do is come to your office or main counter to introduce and properly identify ourselves so you'll know that we're there. We will ask for your permission to inspect the equipment and review your records as is allowed by law. Normally, we will start with checking the control unit of your in-station diagnostic or ISD system if one is installed. However, we may follow a different order depending on the equipment, how the station is laid out, and how busy it is. We will try not to interrupt your business as best we can. Your ISD system gets information from a vapor flow meter in the housing of each one of your dispensers, a pressure sensor which is usually located in the dispenser closest to the storage tanks, and sensors in your tanks that measure fuel levels, amount of fuel dispensed, vapor space, and when fuel is delivered. Under normal condition, the ISD will automatically detect leaks in your vapor recovery system and let you know with flashing lights and an alarm sound, and will also record the alarm for later printout or download. There are different types of alarms for different certified systems. The ISD will identify the alarm types as they occur. Remember, an alarm can only be manually cleared by a certified maintenance technician after the vapor recovery system has been repaired and tested according to your permit conditions and executive orders and there must be an entry in the maintenance log documenting the repair or reason for each cleared alarm event. During an inspection, we'll check to see if your ISD unit is running properly and then print out or download its data into a computer for later review. 
The next step will be to review your records. It will make it easier if you keep your documents well organized and readily available. We'll be looking for the following type of logs. Daily inspections, manufacturer required inspections, periodic compliance inspections, monthly throughput, ISD alarms, repairs, vapor recovery test records. The following certifications. Daily inspection training certificate, ICC certifications of repair technicians, and the following reference materials. A current AQMD permit, executive orders of the phase one and phase two equipment installed at your station, and a copy of AQMD Rule 461. We'll cross-check ISD alarm data we may have collected earlier against alarms logged in your maintenance records to see what may have triggered the alarms and actions or repairs you took in response to the alarms. The next step will be to inspect your dispensers. We will be looking at the condition of the nozzles and hoses. Are there any parts missing? Are the nozzle spouts tight? Are the faceplates in good condition? Are the faceplate and boot properly aligned? Is the boot in good condition? For balanced Phase 2 systems, does the insertion interlock mechanism function properly so that the nozzle will only work if there is a tight seal when fueling? Are the hoses installed in the right direction and are they in good condition? Do the swivels move freely? Are the breakaway check valves that shut off the flow should someone drive off with the hose installed in the right direction? Are there stickers on each side of the dispenser providing an AQMD phone number to call for problems? And if there are, are they in good shape and readable? Are there any signs of gasoline spills? Is the dispensing equipment operating normally when we watch customers dispense gasoline? We will also take a look at your vapor pressure management equipment. Is everything in good condition? Is there any apparent damage? For different types of systems, we will look to make sure the equipment is in the proper configuration and the parts are operating properly. The executive orders for the equipment installed at your station are the best sources of information on specific operation and maintenance procedures. We will check to see that there's a certified pressure vacuum valve on the top of your vent pipes. Finally, we will inspect the phase one fill tubes to your underground tanks. For this part, we will place safety cones around the fill cover area to alert customers to the activity. Once we secure the area, we will open each cover and check the connectors. Are the caps on tight? Do the connectors rotate freely? Are the caps and seals in good condition? On the vapor return side, is the spring-loaded poppet valve in good shape and operating freely? Is the spill bucket free of dirt and debris? On the product delivery side, is the distance between the opening of the drop tube and the bottom of the tank less than 6 inches? Once we're done here, we will put everything back, remove the safety cones, and come back to discuss our findings with you. We will explain any item or action that needs your attention and answer any question you may have related to the vapor recovery equipment. Properly maintaining your vapor recovery system equipment and keeping well organized and easily available records are the keys to quick and easy AQMD inspections and it really does make a difference in helping keep our air clean and healthful. If you have any questions about this subject or would like more information, please give us a call at 909-396-3546 or visit us at the website below. Thank you for watching.